they, they done seen my car anyway. But you know, and, but yeah, but I, you know what I mean. But uh, I'm, and plus I want them to get the whole, the, get your whole, get your whole view. You feel me? Right. How you doing, young lady? Fine. How about you? All right. That's sun in your eyes. It's fine. It's fine? It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> look, man, look. The other day when I seen you with uh, Penelope. Yeah. I asked you to do the interview. You're like, nah, 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 nah. She can do one. Because I thought it was something else. Nah, nah. Yeah, then I seen you a couple of days in a row. And I, to, today I said, man, try your luck today. As soon as I asked you, like, yeah, let's go with it. I was like, man, God is good. You hear me? Right. Because I, 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 when, I, when I seen you, I can tell you got a story. I've and, been out here. And yeah, that's, and that's my channel. About my channel is, is giving a voice to the people out here on the streets. They got addictions. They may be homeless. They might be, you know, what I mean, prostitutes. Whatever it is, Cause a lot of times when people, when people, you know, get to those those um, stages in life, people don't want to hear nothing they got to say. They don't. Family, friends, or anybody. They don't. I've been there. I've been right, there. I've but been but my channel, my over. channel, gonna give you a chance to uh, put your voice out there. And not only that, at the end, I'm gonna actually get some advice to the kids. Because, you know, you, you, we want to keep the kids from following the same footsteps. Of course, of course. And, but also, if you um, you want some assistance and, we, and you stay in contact with me, as long as you put the Make footwork in, happen. the footwork in, I help you get into your stage of recovery. Okay. All right. All right. All right let's get to know you a little bit. What's your name, your age, and where are you from? Melanie, thirty-one. I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. Are you from Baltimore? Oh Fiji yeah. County. Huh? Fiji County. Okay, okay. <laughs> Baltimore and how? What you doing out down here in North Carolina? Moved down here for a dude. For a guy. Yes. I bet y'all, I bet y'all, hundred dollars, y'all ain't together right now. Nope, not at all. Not at all. What happened? Well, we, 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 gonna that. we gonna get to that. We gonna get to that. We gonna get to that. I, I, I want to get to know you as a person first. Uh, start with your childhood. Uh, did you grow up in a two-parent household? No. No, I grew up in a hustle household. Huh? I grew up under hustling. A my hustling household. Was, my mother was a hustler. Oh yeah, what kind of hustling? Oh, cause she was hustling. Yeah, hustling, she hustling. I've been smoking since I was eleven. Yes, hold on. Dang, since she was eleven, you what? Eleven what? Eleven years old in Maryland. Smoking hard. Yeah. Dang. In and out of rehabs. This. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You are going too truth. fast. Go. Fa I want the truth. <laughs> you going too fast. Go fast. Listen. Okay, I about to ask you. Um, when was your? You know, when you first started dipping dabbing in the street, but you said eleven. So eleven years old was crack. You went straight to crack, or did you go to marijuana first, alcohol? Straight to crack. How did that happen? Talk about my it. My uncle. Talk about it. Uh, my uncle turned me on to it. He raped me and put me on to it. So your, your uncle was touching on you as a child. Yeah. And he offered you some, some actually, did you want to get high? Crack ain't, crack ain't a drug that you can just inject in nobody's body. No, it's actually. You got to smoke it. So so, it. so he it asked you, did you want to do it? So smoked you, it off a of Pepsi can. But I'm saying that, but, but you wanted to try it. It was. It I mean, was like he, he enforced you, but he didn't force you. No. Okay, so you you was curious. In a sense, yeah. At Eleven years old. Eleven. How did it, how how did that first blast feel to eleven year old? I can't even remember. Um, did, did did you you went back for some more, didn't you? Yeah, I've been going back for some more years after. Right. So obviously you like the high. Sometimes, yeah. That's about back then. It's a coping mechanism, yeah. Okay, so so back then when you was eleven years old, you was um, accepting the crack from him to cope with him touching on you and shit like not, that. Not, no, not like that. Like after that, I just kind of started sneaking it. You started sneaking it. Yeah. So you who you was hiding from? My mom. Okay, so you going? Would you going to her stash to get it? Yeah. Oh, you my ass beat plenty of times for it too. <laughs> but you were stealing from your mom to y'all. Yeah. Dang. Got my ass beat plenty of times for it. Oh yeah. Uh, I don't condone kids, uh, women, people, uh, parents hitting their kids. But my if, my child, my if my child, if my child, if my child smokes some crack, I'm gonna whoop. It, I'm gonna, I, I probably whoop his ass. You hear me? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But you know, two wrongs don't make it right because she was selling it also. Um, did you finish high school? Oh, out. What grade? Did you, hold on. I don't even think I made it to eight. So you not you don't think you made you, so you didn't finish no, middle I didn't school? Finish, uh, I didn't even start uh, ninth grade. Can you read and write? Yeah, of course. I mean, I'm you, very intellectual. <laughs> I know that's right. Um, dang. So did you have, have you ever thought about going back to school, get a GED or anything yeah. like that? Yeah. But it's kind of hard doing other things when you got addiction. No, I wouldn't say that. It's just I procrastinate too much with it. Okay. I mean, I got the right mind. I just procrastinate. I enjoy the street lifestyle more than I do the lifestyle I need to enjoy. Right. So, um, 
Okay, so you smoke, you started smoking at 11. I've been smoking off and on since. I've been to rehabs. I mean, it's not like I depend on it. I don't depend on it, but it's a coping mechanism for me. So it's something right. that I run to when I got problems. Right. Have you ever had a job? Of course. Okay. Of course. I've got manager experience. So I worked at, I did, I used to work at the uh, Dollar Tree over there off of uh, Random Road. Oh, Dollar Tree over there on Random Road? And I was assistant manager for like The one up there by, um, by Vendalia? The old Miss Winners before they shut right, right, it Right, yeah, right there's up to the Miss mm -hmm. Winners. Oh, you used to work there? Yeah. I used to go in there all the time. Yeah, you probably see me. Yeah, I used to stay out there in Pleasant <laughs> Garden out that way. I had red hair at the point. Oh yeah, I probably did see you. I was a little fatter. Yeah. So, uh, so how long, how long, how long you been um, gone from there? Uh, probably about a year and a half. So you ain't had a job since. Mm -hmm. So, um. Nah, no, I just been lazy. You still smoking? Very rarely, but a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So what you doing? What you doing to support your habit? Escorting. You're escorting. Okay. Yeah, that or hustling. Yeah, but okay. So you smoke? If you ain't smoking that much, and you, I hear um, escorting. That, that's, that should be enough money to um, afford a house. You it got should, yeah. you got somewhere to live? I bullshit. So where you living at? Right now, uh, it's bouncing from room to room. Oh, you talk, but you in a motel room? Yeah. Well, it's better than being out here on the street. Big facts. I mean, I'm mean, being honest. Like a lot of people, a lot of people, I did an interview right here with a guy named O, right here in the same exact spot. I said, "Where you sleep at last night?" He said, uh, "You see over there by that tree right there, oh, Lord. right there." I'm like, "Dang." So you know, like. It'd be like that though. I mean, I'm not I mean, saying that I haven't. I've been outside. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been outside. I mean, I, I know that's right. We all have. You feel me? But um, hey. So let me ask you something. Is that the only drug you ever did? Yeah, that and marijuana. Other than that, I don't dip into having nothing else. You don't dip into having nothing else? No. No, I don't see the effects of it firsthand. I know I'd rather not. Right. So let me ask you something. Um, being molested at a young age like that. It's hard to. How, how did it? How did? Did, did it change your perception on life and, and how you view men? Yeah. How you view men? How you view men? Like, they ain't nothing but a damn watch on your hand. They don't want to do nothing but watch your time, watch your pocket, count your pocket most of the time. That's not to say that there's not no good ones out here, because there is. You just got to learn how to trust them when you can. Well, you want to step up, step up a little bit, you'll be, you be out there um, at that sun, and that way you ain't got to cover your face, right there in that shade. You good right there? Yeah. Is it better? A little bit, yeah. I mean, when you stand in the shade. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> yeah, you say, so you say men like watches, huh? Yeah. What, you ever been married? No. Got any kids? Two. Two? Did you raise them or, they, or did the state take them? They with their daddy. Okay, so they, they, they with their parents? I still see them, yeah. You still see them? That's great. How old are you? 31. No, oh, he's how old today? Yeah. Jesus oh, Christ, 11 and 2. <laughs> right, you're 31, right? <laughs> Threw me off. <laughs> 11 and 2. Dang, you, you got boys off. or girls? A little boy and a little girl. A little boy and a little girl. Let me ask you something. Um, what steps are you going to take to keep your your daughter and your son from following your footsteps, but mainly your daughter with the escort and things like that? I see them when I'm on my best behavior. I right. don't let them see me out here. I don't let them see what I do. I don't let them meet who I meet. Right. I don't let them know we're near my lifestyle. Right. Okay, that's, that's, that's excellent. But um, a lot of people say, a lot of people I interview, they say they don't hide things from their kids because when you hide it, they end up doing it worse. They want to educate the kids they self. I don't but hide I, but I, 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 they've I, never known for me. Like, okay, see, so my son has more sense. He's never seen me like that. Mm -hmm. So I just choose not to let him. Right. You know, what's right. known doesn't need to be known. What's right. understood is okay. understood. Your, your, your son is two. No, my son's 11, my daughter's two. Okay, your son is 11, your daughter's two. Okay, so let me let's talk about some damaging consequences outside of um, being outside, sleeping outside sometime in motel room, bouncing back, bouncing around with no, with no permanent spot to stay, um, and your education. What other what other um, damaging consequences had a lifestyle cost you? Hold on, it's like every time I do an interview, I hear all the real loud trucks. You got death, you got rape. Um, I mean, there's a lot. No, no, I, no. I, I know the damage the consequences of the lifestyle for everybody else. I'm saying, what have you experienced? Because you, 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 you ain't been dead before. I've been kidnapped. I've been drugged. I've been damn near overdosed. I've had to be hit with Narcan two or three times. And my dumb ass is still out here. I mean, you know, addiction is a disease. It, it ain't it something. It ain't, it's not like a light switch. It ain't, it ain't like something you can just say, you know what? Today I'm flight doing it. Let's hit the light switch. You know, it, it's, a, like it's, it's a fight. It's a fight. It's a struggle. It's a struggle. It ain't a fight. It's a whole struggle. That's right. So, so I understand. You know what I mean? 
because a lot, a lot of people they, they're doing that that, that, that that drink out here now and yeah. they're saying they're putting yeah. sores and holes on their body and they're still doing it too so it I, I, I kind of huh it causes necrosis right because I'm about, about to throw hands was, okay yeah but yeah you're right um so let me ask you something you outside other than your drug addiction the first time you ever did drugs if you have any more regrets what would it what would one uh regret be that i even did it in the first place no outside of that outside of that yeah because that, 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 that's the answer school. for everybody that i didn't finish school but you didn't finish school how has it how, how how has that affected your life oh majorly you can't there's certain places you can't get a job at there's you can't if you don't have the certain requirements or the skill set they don't they bypass you completely right yeah because somebody said you gotta have a you gotta have, you gotta have a, a degree just to get a job at, at, at Popeyes across the street, damn near. Damn near. Yeah. <laughs> they say you gotta have you gotta a college have degree to get a job at Popeyes. Well, yeah, I understand that. Um, listen, what's your name again? Melanie. Melanie, it was an honor talking to you. I see you all the time. I want you to stay in contact with me just in case you. Um, oh, let me, one more question. What is it gonna take for you for you for you um, to get? To say, you know what, I'm, I'm finna start my, 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 my journey to recovery. Cause a lot of people say, if you ain't sick and if you're not if you're not sick and tired, then you're gonna stay out here. Right. You know what I mean? And I ask you that question because if, if you are sick and tired, I want you to contact me and we gonna and I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a I'm part of the in process. With you. Okay, you gonna keep in contact with yeah, me? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and that way I can be a part of the process. You feel me? But um, what is it gonna take? take no death or nothing like that i'm on my way to do try to do the recovery thing today so it's crazy that you ran into me okay so so you almost there then mm -hmm. your mind your mind is, is ready for change oh yeah that's a fact that's good that way for the last uh, week week and a half now damn well, I, I hit you at the right time there you did God okay that's great uh listen before i end interviews i always ask the person i'm interviewing to give the kids some positive advice and not just the kids it could be a grown person that's thinking about picking that crack up for the first time that they ain't never did it yet. What type of advice would you give them to stop them from doing it? Don't let the devil take your soul. Just truth be told, don't let the devil take your soul. Because once you touch it, you can't go back. It takes everything you have. Dang. And it takes everything you have. You lose everything behind it. I've seen people sell the clothes off their back for it. Dang. So don't let the devil take your soul. Right. That's excellent advice. I appreciate your time. I got a donation for you. God bless you. I'm going to give you my number. I need you to stay in contact with me now. Definitely. God bless you.